You just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. It's a good bicep there, isn't it? Uh, this is Mind Pump. All right, uh, we got a great giveaway for you today. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this podcast. Make it a good one. Tell us a fitness story or something. If we pick your comment, we'll give you free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications so that you can get on here in the first 24 hours of dropping an episode to potentially win some free stuff. We give away stuff all the time, t-shirts, supplements, and free workout programs like today, uh, like I just told you, MAPS and Abolic. Also, one more thing before we start the podcast, we're running a huge promotion. It's April. Get ready for summer. So we have MAPS and Abolic on sale, 50% off. We also have the Shredded Summer Bundle, 50% off. So both are half off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code April Special for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Have you seen the um, uh, the the homeless guy? I need to be politically correct. What did I say last time? I said bum bum last time. <laughs> yeah, the the home the, challenge. The, I think I brought him up on the show before. Did I bring him up the, the he's free range as well. Oh yeah, the guy who washes the windows. Yeah, dude, that he ends up he just made it muddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know you're talking about. So, but I I'm not giving up on him. Like I, you had him wash your stuff again? No, no. So I saw him, right? He's, his, uh, he was, I see him, like, I don't know, every every other day or so he comes by. And he was walking up and he's got his bucket of stuff and he's walking towards me. And I just washed the, the vehicles this weekend. So they're clean, dude. I just They just did the windows and everything. So, hey, man, what's going on? I say hi to him real quick because I know he's coming at me to ask. And he, and he comes over, hey, you want your windows washed? I said, oh, man, I just washed my windows. He goes, hey, how about your tires? I got armor all and, and I was like, oh, I do need my tires and rims done, though. So I got him out there doing the tires and rims you right give now. Your rim job, so oh, Sal. Of <laughs> you clean the rims. What are you talking I mean, about? It's just there, right? It's, a, it's uh, yeah. underhand pitch it to you. I guess yeah, I, get that. I guess I get that. Yeah, yeah. No, so I, I you know, I Did shot. You enjoy it. Well, here's, rim job. here's what I here's what I I, I think I may need to do next time because I, I don't know I don't know how I'm going to do this with us because we come in here and we we record and so I can't go out afterwards, right? Uh, is I pay him before and I think that's the the, the mistake. Yeah. I think I should wait until he does it. So I hope What if you do this? What if you say mm. I'll give you whatever. I'll give you five dollars now. Uh -huh. And then when I come out, if you do a really good job, I'll give you another five dollars. Something well, like that. So I gave him ten dollars and said, Hey, uh I I do not get a chance to do my rims and tires all the time, even when I clean my own cars. And I said, uh I you could totally get me on all my vehicles and I will I will pay you to do it if you do a really good job. Okay, so you do a really, like yeah, I said that. If you do a really good job, I said, I'll have you do this to all my cars all the time. So do a good job. I gave him 10 bucks, and then I actually had Eli give him some some bars and some beef jerky and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm, I'd am i rather like over, you know, I hooked yeah. him up of nice, course. and then hopefully he does a really- and You know what's funny? We, he's not a good window well, washer. He's offering a service, which is great. I, that's why I love it. Yeah. I love that. He's, he's yeah. trying. And you could, he's not all mentally there. He's off. He's yeah. definitely yeah. off. And so that, but he's the dude that sit, he sits there, kind of chilling. And uh -huh. he's kind of yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. always sits there. And he's normally got like his little window washer thing, yeah. and he's waiting for someone to park, and then he. You know, we you. did. We went to that talk that Arthur Brooks did uh, at that event, and he talked about how um, you know dignity is so important. And he says if you're going right. to give someone money, you want them to feel dignity, not like you're just giving them money, but rather. And so his his advice was to ask them to pray for you, which I thought was brilliant. Hey, I'll, you know, I'm going to give you some money. Would you mind praying for my my son? He's got tests or whatever or whatever. And I thought that was absolutely brilliant. So I, I appreciate it. I used to have a guy used to do that to my windows when I had my studio. Yeah. I had a guy, that's what he would do. He would mm -hmm. walk around and say, hey, man, you, would you, if you wash my windows, I'll give you money every week. Love that. And he did. Every week he came and he took care of my windows. Yeah, so I hope him. he does a good yeah, job because I want to yeah. help him out like that. I mean, I would pay someone else to do but it. But you haven't right? seen the rims? You haven't seen yet? What's no, going on? It's going on right now. So we'll see what <laughs> we, <laughs> we walked out. Maybe I'll throw it on my story. So, yeah, I'll throw it on my story so people can see. So there's another yeah. example, okay, of uh, <laughs> remember when we were talking about songs and like how we kind of get the lyrics wrong and you know we kind of to go through these things like you hear something forever and you just have a thought of what it is and then later on sometimes you, you know your mind's blown because you're like oh my god I didn't even like think of it like that right so uh, we were listening to it Smells Like Teen Spirit in the car right everybody mm -hmm. knows the song from Nirvana the the name and the title always like I had this idea of like like that's a weird title you know mm -hmm. Smells Like Teen Spirit and I was thinking of like, you know, in the video and everybody's in there in the gym and there's like sweaty people. and yeah. all. So I was just thinking of like, you know, I'm like teen spirit. And then Courtney told me like, well, that's actually a deodorant. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't know I that. remember that. Did I, you know that? I no. remember that. That's a, that's a deodorant? Teen, in the 90s. Teen spirit was a deodorant. It was a deodorant. 
I remember so that. So it's like named after that. And I'm like, what? It's named after deodorant? Yeah, really? Now, now, did the deodorant come out before or after the song? That's the oh, thing. Oh, it was there, yeah. It was it, already it there. It was already there. I remember Yeah, Spirit. I'm sure they, would, they wouldn't be able to do it if it was after. That's yeah. so weird. I re- there's, there's a few commercials I distinctly remember from the 90s. That one and, Nog- really? and then Noxzema. Remember the Noxzema girl? I do oh, remember yeah, Noxzema. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, there it is. Like, Teen Spirit, antiperspirant, deodorant, stick. No she, shit. I had no idea. Like, I just thought it was some weird reference. Check like, the uh, Wikipedia on one when the company started, Doug. Yeah, let's find this out. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm not that stupid. Yeah, that's yeah. what a great random I, fact. I totally <laughs> yeah, remember. Yeah, right. It's Isn't so that weird. Just yeah. weird? It's so know. weird. You said that, and I just pictured the commercial. It was a girl's deodorant. It yeah. wasn't one for guys. Yeah, I just didn't you picture them the writing a song like, to, like, like you know. I'm just like, what, when did that happen? Were they getting off the bus and like somebody yeah. was just like, oh yeah, uh, that's do you, great title do for you, my song. Do you guys have commercials that you remember from way back that just you just you can right now play it in your head? Yeah, kind like of. That? Yeah, some. Like I, the, you know, the uh, what commercials is stuck in my head forever are the uh, the the Wrigley's girls, the double mint of double fresh, double smooth. Oh, gum, double mint gum. Yeah, yeah. Those, those, oh, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the herbal essence commercials. <laughs> Oh, yeah. they were in my head because they were orgasming. The yeah. uh, I know there's obviously a theme here going with me. Yeah. There, uh, the um, uh, Axe uh, body spray yeah. commercials, like the and the dirty balls commercials. No, no. Could play with these balls all day. That was a good oh, yeah. one. That wasn't that long ago. The dirty balls. Oh yes, it was. That's. 15 years ago now. Yeah, but you weren't well, a I loved, kid. I loved yeah. all the, the character ones, like, uh, you know, with McDonald's where they had the nuggets, uh, where they were little puppets. They'd jump in the barbecue sauce. Jump in the barbecue sauce. Oh, yes. and, then, and then you had the avoid the noid for uh, yes. Domino's. Yes, What happened to avoid the noid? Bro, the noid was awesome. I had a shirt. I actually had a shirt. It was my favorite shirt in fourth grade, and it said that on it. Avoid yeah. the noid. Yeah. And he was Nobody the dude. gets that now. I've always wondered where these companies, because I would love to find somebody like this for our business. Like, just come up with a character. Well, yeah, you know, just the 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 the, the, the mastermind behind this, Donnie like, the Dumbbell. Who is who is the like Budweiser, <laughs> Burger King's brilliant? Like, there's some brands. What about Spud McKenzie? Remember Spud yeah, the Dog? Yeah. 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 Well, beer, I mean, deliver. beer is well, all, yeah. beer is always crushed. It like beer is uh, whoever is in charge of finding the creative people to do the ads. Yeah, yeah. Beer's always been Dude, phenomenal. You know what I just remembered? Right now? Let's just. You were telling your story about the guy cleaning your rims. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys? This is this is hilarious. Okay. So way back in the day, people who listened to us way back in the day know what I'm talking about. The some of the first shirts that we sold when Mind Pump first got sto- started. <laughs> I know said, what you're they said zero fucks on them. Yeah. So it said Mind Pump, <laughs> and it would say zero fucks. Because we were like, we give zero fucks. We don't yeah, care. Anyway, right. so we had like yeah. we had a whole bunch of these shirts. That we made that said zero fucks. We actually we, wore those to Ad, one of Adam's like shows we, here in San Jose. We did. We yeah. all showed up and yeah. like a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Anyway, we had a bunch of these shirts. We sold some of them, but at some point we're like, let's get rid of these. We're not selling them anymore. So we had a box of these shirts and we threw them in the dumpster here in the back. Yeah. Not thinking anything of it, right? Bunch of zero fuck. Anyway, I come to work and there's a homeless guy yeah. walking around. <laughs> and we're like, oh my God. And he's, like, he's wearing a zero fuck shirt. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, yeah, zero fuck. So remember when the, I was like, the oh epitome my. of zero fuck. I was like, right? oh my yeah, God. Like, like, remember dude. when you guys went and let me do my idea that I really want to do? Remember I wanted to go around to, because San Jose does have a lot of homeless people. I wanted to go around to all the, the people on the corners that hold the signs. I wanted to give them a shirt and give them a dollar for every push-up they could do. Remember mm, that? Yeah. I thought that would be I thought that would be brilliant advertising. I think that would like, be taken wrong though. Yeah. yeah, that's what you said. You guys yeah. wouldn't let me do it. I thought it was I thought it was a great idea. I thought, well, dude, we go over there, we give them money, we video the whole thing where we're giving them money for for all their yeah. push-ups and we hook them up with a t shirt that has too our, bum fightish for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, see I still I still am not like sold on it. That was a, idea. that was a thing back in the that day. That was, yeah. That kind of ruined the whole idea. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't yeah. you can't really so do that anymore. Thanks a lot, bum fight. <laughs> anyway, guy. hey, hey, so here's something crazy. So every once in a while I run into a video that blows my mind. And this blew my mind, right? <laughs> it's so we've all played Mario Kart, right? Of course. Yes. In Mario Kart, what happens when you throw the banana peel and a car runs over it? Woo, it spins yeah, out. Yeah, you spin out. You turn, turn around. And- right. So this guy, he, he's got like this science channel on YouTube. And so he tests out all these things. Yeah. So he tested out the banana peels with the go-kart. That's not going to work. It worked. No, it doesn't. It worked. No, it doesn't. I one, swear. One banana peel? On, no, a, he, on a go-kart or a car? Go-kart. Okay, on a he go-kart. He put a bunch of banana peels well, so that yeah. he wouldn't miss it, right? Uh, okay. And first he's going around corners without the banana peels. Totally fine. Yeah. Then he runs over the banana peels and spins out, dude. Hits the side. 
The banana peel. Come on, come on. I swear to God, dude. Is it like a lot? I want to see. Do you have the, can we see? Maybe Doug can find. I have to, search I have, I'd have to send. I want to see because I, I mean, okay, obviously, if I'll like the Harvard. whole the whole thing was banana pills, yeah. of course. But no, no, no. It's there's like a patch of them going around the corner. Is what it was. <laughs> well, obviously, you got to ramp it up now and get a bunch of tortoise shells. And it, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, hey, actually, stop I, fucking around. That for sure would Shoot work. Fireball. Throw, the, yeah. throw, throw a turtle shell at someone yeah. while you're driving. <laughs> Some in lightning out of nowhere. One hundred percent. Where did you? Work. Was it like a TikTok thing or what was it? No, I don't know what it was. I just saw it on on the internet. But hey, you actually, know, so have you guys ever stepped on a banana peel? Uh, You'll no, fall. Can't can't say I have. it works. I tested it as a kid because you see in the cartoons, right? And I'm, I'm yeah. like, oh, is this is this going to work? Right. If you put a peel on the ground pe- with not the, the the yellow part on the outside, underneath is the, the yeah. white part. Put the white part on the ground. If you step on it, you will 100% That must have been a out. thing back in the day because that was like a reference all over the place, especially in cartoons it, and yeah, it really pop culture. Works. See, look, oh, my God. He breaks like the science down on it and everything, huh? Let's he see. does. You got Doug's at it up on the TV. Are you? Is that you? I'm watching it right yeah, now. Yeah, you got to oh. fast forward it because he like breaks it all down. Yeah, and yeah. Shows. It's like minute 4.55. Uh, yeah, it puts like about 20 banana peels in one spot. Yeah, it says, do banana peels really make you slip in a go-kart? race okay and uh you guys are gonna so see. he so he hits like a, a corner pretty hard yeah so normally he's going around this corner it's totally fine and then he hits the banana peels and look oh, whoa, 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 hey, whoa. he gets him a little sideways see what happens every time he goes around <laughs> and he hits the banana watch 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 <laughs> see <laughs> it works dude hey. <laughs> I, i'm always fascinated by the people that like have the time to do these types of things well, like, i mean i'm sure he's got a million i mean that does he got, i don't know yeah. how many, how many oh views? it's got 100 it says 112 thousand views yeah dude. he's gotta eat some mushrooms and really have fun yeah so, you so, know you know what though <laughs> what? You, I, this <laughs> I, I feel bigger at work i mean it's like you can experiment experiment yeah. let's go this i can make you bigger this, your head I, on some bricks yeah. this idea of like making like a viral video and and like you're gonna make a bunch of money or go famous or whatever from it is so hilarious to i know me. like yeah. it just doesn't you know when we we talked you know we were talking trash you guys were talking trash about the tiktok i saw did you guys see too andrew did like the little did, carbs yeah, yeah. protein thing when you were doing your yeah. little dance hey yeah. Eat, you know, hey. carbs protein yeah, yeah, protein. Fats. yeah you know, this is what i'm like dude this <laughs> and of course, yeah. I you know I you knew this was coming, like because we said that and heard, heard a bunch of. Feelings. Oh, of course, you heard a bunch of feelings. So I got people DMing me, like justifying, like, well, you know, I know so and so, and it's not just you know stupid dancing. There's a lot of trainers that and they they get a lot of likes and a lot of views, and I'm like, okay, well, that's what exactly what we're talking about is that yeah. it gets a lot of likes and views, but does it convert into revenue, which is the real the desired outcome of why you are doing all unless that, right? you just want people to yeah. watch. The answer is no. Well, I think that's, I think sometimes, I think some people are internally conflicted with that a little bit. Like they, they may want the, the popularity part as much or more than the, the real revenue. What, you know, okay. So here's the thing like fame without getting, deriving any other benefit from it is worthless. It's, In fact, it's all the bad stuff. It's fame is bad. <laughs> yeah. It's not cool to be super famous. I mean, you might like it for a month, but then after that, could you imagine never being in a, So we're You're nowhere to puck from uh, the reality. I'll, world. I'll tell you guys a story. We're obviously nowhere near uh, anything that I call fame. Any, nowhere near. In some circles, we might people that might listen to the podcast, but I don't. I don't walk around the streets and whatever. It's not a big deal. But one time, I went to a restaurant with Jessica, and we we're sitting down, and there was a table of people sitting diagonal, and they kept looking over. One of them comes over, and they're huge fans. Brings some friends over. They take pictures with us, and then they go sit down. We have yet to eat the rest of the dinner. All I can think about now is these people are watching us and I'm trying to have a private conversation and dinner with my wife. I'm like, I couldn't imagine being someone like a famous celebrity, like The Rock. Right. You know, you imagine go to the store, everybody's yeah. got bodyguards. Well, and yeah. a, a what if ma- you have a bad hair day or something? Or you well, say something no, stupid? worse. Like, imagine. Well, they love that. They'll capture that. Absolutely. Well, that, imagine, okay, and we in our pod, the podcast, we have shared, you know, a personal our personal life and that we've all probably each gone through a, a rough patch in the last six years mm-hmm. that we've openly shared. Imagine that if we were that famous. You get people, they park outside and that's those are the times when they want to catch you. Yeah, they're yeah. waiting for a breakdown. Right, exactly. You're, you're having like one of the hardest times you're going through in your life. Life and the media just can't wait to jump all over it. And it's catch also a picture. Of it. You know what it is. Well, the reason why it's alluring is it feels like love. Like we all want love, right, from people. We all want people to like us and love us, but it's fake. Yeah. It's not real love. So you know your friends really love you. 
these people who watch and whatever they they say they do, but wh- watch how fast they flip on you oh, yeah. when something you know bad happens or something whatever. Especially when it plays into their favor, where they can sell that to somebody or do you know something to get notoriety no, themselves. I'd much rather be nobody know me, but be extremely successful. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drive a drive a Toyota pickup, and people yeah. have no idea. Yeah, you know, I mean that's way more alluring. For absolutely, me. Yeah. absolutely. Anyway, stupid. Anyway. Yeah. You guys, uh, have you guys seen that? I guess the Justice was it the Justice League, the they four hour the, movie. The, yeah, is it the Zack Snyder cut? I don't know what it's called, but my my brother in law, I saw him post. Did he say he liked it? I, you know what, I haven't asked him. I'll ask him because I was supposed to ask him anyway. So you keep talking right now, and I'll ask him. Okay. So <laughs> so here's the thing. So <laughs> thanks, Dad. You're, you're good at that. Well, I told you I would do it, and I did. I totally didn't do it. Right. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> Just keep making noises out of your face, and then I'll can we share that with the audience? Come up with what can I was we, trying to say. We, we got to share this with the audience. So before we got on here, we had tec- technical difficulties, right? Um, that never happens. It never happens. Never happens. Right. Uh, and it's, uh, of course, it's Sal's mic is wired. It gets way more mileage. It's, it's exactly. It's, yeah. He talks it's so worn he out, talks dude. so much that his wire now, I think this is like the second or third one that Doug's had to replace. <laughs> he is burnt out already. <laughs> so yeah. When are you going to get the sign? We signed? gotta get a better warranty on this. <laughs> yeah, things. dude. Yeah. A lot of juice goes through this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, a lot of horsepower. Anyway, yeah. so, the, so the Justice League, I watched the, uh, the one that they put out in the movies. And it was okay. It was disappointing. Apparently, this new cut is like way longer, and they developed the characters more, and it's got way better rating. They're saying it's a different movie, essentially, wow. which yeah, is cool. That's, that's super great. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to check that so out. So was, it, was it supposed to be like the same plot, or is it supposed to be completely a different- It's just way more- I haven't seen it, okay? But apparently, it's way more character development. It, there's way more to the story. Because the original one was, was you could, it fell flat. You could well, tell you watching. This, this is the conundrum. A lot of times, like, you know, the director has a certain vision vision for everything and then you know and then the studio comes in and just interrupts everything or some other executive like gets their hands all and just meddles too much and then it ruins the actual uh you know the movie the the, the film mm. and and I've seen this happen a few times and they talk about this too even in the Star Wars franchise because of all the politics and all the agendas you know a lot of these people have now you know in, in the executive positions they're meddling too much they're, yeah. they're trying to, to push too many things and inject things with Within, uh, you know, storylines, and then it ruins the flow of the entire uh, saga. Yeah, didn't you say they were doing? Weren't they doing it with one of the Star Wars, where they were going to do a different cut? Yeah, George Lucas uh, apparently and um, uh, Favreau w- were were looking back at like you know changing and, and, and re-editing uh, some of those those newer ones that came out mm. like nine and, and ten and eleven. Uh, it, it, originally, it was uh, more Luke focused because like he's he's the cornerstone of that entire. Uh, series, uh, you know, the, the Skywalkers, that's what Star Wars is about. And they went away from that. And so anyway, the, the crazy core fans, you know, obviously had a problem with this forever. And so it was just like a disconnect from that. So well, F- Favre, uh, I don't know if I'm saying right. Favre. Favre? I know I want Favreau. Yeah. Favre. Yeah. He did the best job in my opinion. He's killing it. Yeah. And, and, you know, and it's, it, it just sucks because he's getting a lot of like pushback from, from the studio and people in positions like Kathleen Kennedy, who's just like snubbing a lot of their ideas because they have way too many agendas. Just let them write good stories. Let, let them do it. They're, mm-hmm. they're killing it. Obviously mm-hmm. leave them alone. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of movies, uh, are you guys going to watch the King Kong Godzilla movie coming out? Oh yeah. So when's that come out? You know, what's great. I'm yeah. So excited. That's like the only movie out right now. Right. So uh, is it out now? I mean, it's coming out. Okay. I'm just saying like, something to look right. forward to but uh like i i started to to to, to prime my kids about this and, and 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 everett my youngest is like so into monster movies so we went through and we watched all the king kongs no we watched all the godzilla you watch the old godzillas yeah. or the new ones it, both old ones oh, the, old and the ones new we did old first and then we did the new the new godzilla was weak but uh you know the kong, the king kongs were great and kong island was kind of fun uh, but you remember that one Pacific Rim? Yes, that was so good, by the way. It was way. great. Is that your first time I, I watching count it? That, uh, no, I watched it a long time ago, but I rewatched it with my kids, and I was like, oh, yeah, this was really well I, was done. Was it that good? It, I, I, I was watched, surprised. I watched it. it a long time ago, too. I can't remember what I thought. For a yeah. monster movie, it was it was fun. Here's the thing, so and this is what they did really well. Monster movie genre, you know, big monsters or whatever that destroy cities, there's a, there's a flavor to them and an energy behind them. 
And when they get too serious, I think they lose it. Yeah. There's got to be some fun behind it. And then what's fun is watching the monsters fight and their different skills and techniques. You know what it is? Uh, yeah, they got sound, right into you could it. Not they sound got nerdier right now, bro. I, don't, <laughs> I love monster movies. I can sound nerdier. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop something on you guys. <laughs> Do it. Okay. So you remember WandaVision, like at the end, where uh, in a uh, spoiler alert for everybody else, but like. Uh, there's one of these, the, one of the, the aliens comes back and like talks to, to I, I forget what the agent's name was, but she turns out to be one of these scroll yes, aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know all about the scroll race? No. Of your mothers. Uh, so this is this is something that like apparently they're like shape shifting aliens and in the old comics they come in and they like basically play the roles of all the Avengers and like all the oh, you know all, shit yeah and so I'm like oh shit what because I'm still confused as where they're gonna take this franchise because after Thanos snapped everybody gone right and then and they're trying to re uh, you know piece together yes like, this entire crazy universe now all of a sudden we got these scroll aliens that are gonna be like no that's exciting. infiltrating I'm hoping that that the new Kong Godzilla that sounded nerdy. Heart, yeah, it did. Harks back. <laughs> I, 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 I'm hoping they have that that old school monster movie flavor. It was fun. It's fun to watch. Pacific Rim did a good job. Yeah. Some of the other ones didn't. And by the way, do you guys know? I don't know if you guys knew this. So the original King Kong versus Godzilla was a big deal, right? Godzilla was the the monster of the Asian franchises, right? All the, the yeah. Japanese movies. King Kong was America's monster. We had the, the famous, you know, Kong movie or whatever the, where he yeah. climbs the Eiffel Tower and gets shot by the planes. Did you know that they made two endings for that movie? I do. I did hear that. So in, One for the Americans, uh, one for the... Yes, yeah. the American audience, King Kong wins. That's the one I watched as a kid. King yeah. Kong defeats Godzilla. I did not know... Which is Im improbable. That for the Jap... <laughs> for example, did Godzilla, come on, man. fire, he dude. Fuck, he fucks everything up. Yeah. The, 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 the Japanese uh, audience got to see Godzilla beat King Kong. Which I think was fuck, man. I want to see that one. So uh, my my uh, apparently very nerdy brother in law too just responded right. So his, his, his this this is his word for word is his response. It was good. It took me three sessions to watch it though. I could bring myself to I couldn't bring myself to watch it in one sitting. I'm not a huge fan on Snyder's direction style, but I do think this version was what should have been released. Laugh out loud. You open the gate. I could talk about anything Batman for hours. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> yes. So okay, let me. Ask I'm going to give you guys a yeah. cell phone number so you guys can talk. <laughs> so okay, so hold on. Here's the deal. There's okay. There's a couple things in life that you're either one or the other. I am Batman. Yeah. For example, you're either uh, the Who. You either love the Who or you're Led Zeppelin. You don't love them equally. That's just a fact. It's either one or the other. Uh, see, I thought it was more, uh, the polarization was more Beatles versus Rolling Stones. That's another one. Yeah. It's like you either love the Beatles more than anything or so you like I'm Rolling I'm just going to say right now, I'm, I am all Beatles. Same. And I am all Led Zeppelin. Same. Mm. Same here. That's me Come too. at me. So here's the other one. You're either Batman or you're Superman. It's one or the other. You don't like them equally because they're so opposite from each other, right? Superman is like the the super powered boy scout batman is the dark well i'm sure there's yeah. uh, batman's way cooler no, yeah superman i'm sure there is a no a uh, you know psychology reason for that right you probably whichever one you most identify with the most is probably who you're drawn to so if you think of yourself as more the darker good bad guy right. you're going to like batman more if you think you're the more clean cut, you know, play by the rules, like, you know. Super powered. Yeah, you're a Superman guy. Are you a yeah. Superman guy? Superman. You'll See, have, I'm a, I'm you'll a Batman have one guy, weakness. So. Yeah, I, I like that. Mm. Are you Superman or Batman guy? <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm Batman all day, yeah, yeah, dude. Superman's yeah. bro. Can I just tell you something right now? In, 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 in Superman would annihilate Batman and while eating a sandwich and reading a book. Doesn't right matter. Now. He's cooler. Try writing good villains around Superman. It's just so lame. You know, like, <laughs> oh, ooh, I have kryptonite. It's always kryptonite. That, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> that's all that's stupid. Is. That's all there that's is. Stupid. I, although the original Batman had the Joker, Batman, you know, like uh, did so many I'll villain say, characters. Uh, are I, awesome. I agree. I think that's that part is really cool. But you know, the original Superman movies of the '80s were awesome, except for the one where Superman he has to stop the nuke because he, uh, what's his name uh, is blowing up one of the the Zod or what? No, no, not no. Zod. It was uh, what's the other guy's name? Damn it, he, the bald guy. Lex. Oh, Luthor. thank Luthor. you very much. That's right. He sends a nuke down to, like the the only two. to the San Andreas Fault so that. It'll, it'll start an earthquake and cause a part of California to float in the ocean. Yeah. So he has to either fly down to stop the nuke or fly down to save Lois Lane. He can't do both. Lois gets buried under rubble. He gets pissed off. He flies up into space. 
And then the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life, he spins around the earth and makes the earth it rotate back, yeah. backwards, and somehow that takes goes back that turns time. back time. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, dude. That would cause earthquakes Physics, itself. Dude. That would destroy the earth. <laughs> yeah, there's science in there. I thought Doug was about I thought you were gonna chime in right there and shut this nerdy conversation down right here. That's what you were getting ready <laughs> to do right there. You, you just, Close to it. I know, you threw him another bone there. I'm gonna change it though for you guys. All so right. for the oh. listeners that uh, are not that That nerdy. was fun. Whatever. I, I have a couple questions though. One, uh, one I want to I want to get to uh, a kid's update on both of you guys. It's been a while since we've, we've kind of updated where everybody's okay. at. And then, right. But first, Sal, you got to address uh, Lenny. Oh. Lenny. Lenny is uh, for the YouTube watch. So yeah. people that are watching on YouTube see that uh, Justin has a big guitar behind him. He is Veronica. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. She has a name. Always. Oh, okay. Oh, you so never ask not, any guy uh, yeah, that, oh, okay. that plays so, guitar. So they name their guitar. Justin has Veronica and Sal has Lenny. What is the, the story on Lenny? So Lenny is, it's a statue. It's like a chef. He's got little glasses on, kind of chubby cheeks. So I'll tell you the whole, I'll tell you even why he was named Lenny, which is, it's going to hurt someone's feelings, but whatever. So, <laughs> so when I got, when I became a general manager, the first club that I managed was Salinas. So they, I'm a 19 year old kid or whatever. And they sent me down to Salinas to their, one of their smallest clubs just to test me out. I did real well. So then I got one of the, the flagship big clubs, which was Sunnyvale. You right? should tell them too. Like Salinas was like, they, they, you either, they sent you out there either one to, to put kill you, your career, to put, yeah, put you through the fire as a, as a, a new guy or basically to kill your career. Right. On, on right. Your way and out. I was a young kid. And so I was the youngest general manager at the time in the history of the company. And they wanted to test me out. Send me to Salinas. I crushed over there. I think, believe it or not, you want to hear something crazy? So just get into some numbers. The, the, the club's entire total gross goal when I got there was 60 something thousand dollars for the whole club. Uh, we were hitting 120 to 150,000 at Damn. that club. So they were like, so they put me in Sunnyvale, which Sunnyvale at the time was where, that's where the big dogs got developed, right? So they said, we're going to give you this big club. So I get in there, and this is where I met uh, Marcucci. Our good friend Marcucci, mm. who he this guy is he, he worked at Salinas with you? No, no, no. Oh, I, you just Sunnyvale. Met. Oh, Sunnyvale. Sorry. Sunnyvale. So so my old so the manager that was there before me was one of my first mentors, Don, who I've talked about on the show. Don hired Marcucci, but splits right after becomes a DM. I get Marcucci as this new kid. And this guy is just he's a character. I don't know how to explain Marcucci, but he's a total character. One of the most pure salespeople you ever meet in your life, and just oozes charisma. He is one of those people just, that is obnoxiously loud, cocky as shit, and you love him. Uh, you just love the that's guy. That's how I would describe yes. someone. Which it, that's a rare, right? It's rare you meet somebody who's loud, obnoxious, and cocky. You don't like him right away. You don't like him, but he's not that person. No, he has all those attributes, but at the same time, he's so likable. One of the most charismatic people you ever meet Absolutely. in your entire life. So anyway, I get there, and I'm you know I'm 20 now, and Marcucci's. 21 maybe he's a kid too and he walks in he's got a suit on and a briefcase he's, he's a sales counsel for memberships i'm like what the fuck is going on <laughs> but anyway i love him right away he sets up his little office and he brings in the statue oh this Lenny. is from i didn't know this is from this is marcucci's so he brings it in so he puts it in there and so then we become friends we're crushed with it. anyway when i left that club he gives uh, this statue to me and this statue has always followed me around it's followed me around in every club i've run it followed me around in the studio, the studio that I ran. It was in my house. It's like a good luck charm or whatever. It's it's good we, luck, Lenny. It's weird because it's a chef, you know, and yeah. he used to have a frying pan. You know, right. the frying pan broke, so he's just kind of standing like this or whatever. He's just about to make you a meat bowl. Now here's the here's why we call him Lenny. So <laughs> I'm not gonna say his last name, but our district manager, when when I was in this club, was his name was Lenny. And he's a great guy, love him, uh, but he was overweight. He was an overweight district manager for a fitness company, which we always kind of thought was hilarious. So, and he looks just like this dude. <laughs> this literally looks like a statue of my district manager. So we named him Lenny. Oh, my God. <laughs> I did not know that. that. We did have some fat you, managers. Did you I, know I always that, thought that was did crazy. You guys, did you guys know that Bob Brooks passed? No. I don't know if Justin remembers him, but I know you. I know. The yeah. name, I definitely remember. Yeah, Bob Brooks died just the other, like maybe a week or two ago. Oh, that's so sad. He was a, uh, a a district manager that I He'd had. He'd been in the company forever. I really liked him. He, he had a very, uh, most of the guys were kind of, you know, very high, strong, crazy, aggressive. He had a very. No, he leave you alone. Yeah, he did a good job. Very, exa alone. very chill personality. He said something to me that I've said a bunch of times that, uh, to this day. So it stuck with me forever. And I, I was this, you know, wild, uh, anxious kid when I was in, in first getting into management and leadership and stuff. And this Bob Brooks guy comes in. I, I'd never met him before, and we're talking. 
And I don't remember what it was that I was all antsy about wanting to get to. And he tells me that he's the one who told me the old bull, young bull oh, story. Wow. I'd never heard that story in my life before. And he he gives that analogy to me to get me to kind of calm down and slow down. Mm. And I, coming from your district manager, you're not ready for someone to tell you a story <laughs> like that. Yeah. And I died. Forever I used that. There's actually so much wisdom. There is, store. No, there's a ton of that's yeah. why it's a it's good it's a, obviously it a, it's a bit offensive or much for some Whatever. people to hear. I, so I you know where I first heard that story huh. the movie Colors you guys remember Colors Sean yeah. Penn and mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember who else was in it uh, yeah, but was that it, Spike Lee No it was uh, one of the first gang movies that came out oh. um, and uh, it was in that Colors No shit yeah, Now the cop the older cop is played I can't remember his damn name Doug you'll know who it is He's the what's his name Robert Duvall There you go So oh. it's Robert Duvall's the old cop mm. Sean Sean Penn is the young cop. Great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. And he comes in, and they're they're part of this gang task force. And at the time, in the 90s, in the early 90s, this was the peak of gang violence, especially in uh, Los Angeles. So it's a really, really good movie. And he tells that story to Sean Penn, because uh. Sean is this like young, like, I'm going to go in there and fuck everybody up attitude. And Robert Duvall is this old, experienced, wise cop. Yeah. So he says the story, which is, and I'll, I'll repeat it again on the podcast, there's a young bull and an old bull standing on a hill, and the young bull looks down and sees all these cows, and he says, hey, let's run down there and fuck one of those bulls. Uh, excuse me, fuck one of those cows. Yeah. And the old bull goes, no, 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 relax, dude. He goes, let's walk down and fuck them all. Yeah. So it's, just, it's just terrible. <laughs> it's, that's the, that, and there's, but there's wisdom in no, there. The, you updated that story for no, uh, the 21st century. Yeah, yeah. no, no. It's, it, it is, it, there is a lot of wisdom in it's that. It's like slow it, down and then you can accomplish I mean, shit, everything. Justin and I, we were just talking about this off air about being patient with things, right? We yeah, talked yeah. about... You know, a lot you guys of people talking about me. No, we were <laughs> we were we were talking. Be patient. He's we were talking about like right, we're getting ready to update the studio, right? Which is it's going to be costly or whatever like that. Justin's got some stuff going on with Axon that both things I think that I could say if you don't mind me saying about you that he was very anxious to do right away. You know, yeah. like hurry up. Let's, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, it's drove him crazy since day one. The way some of our branding and some of our stuff looks and the way the studio looks mm -hmm. and things like that. I've had to be very patient with it. Right. And and the and the truth is like it's going to work out better having waited longer and so there, I think there's a lot of wisdom in in getting people to relax you yep. know don't slow down take your time and you get all things of it. will work out yeah it, it, it's a lesson it's a constant lesson I think everybody experiences that in some direction uh, but yeah delayed gratification is hard you yeah. know it's it's a hard thing to to have that discipline but it's so rewarding once you get to that oh. place where you start to see it uh, the the fruits of it uh, come oh to bear. think of all the mistakes you made as a young uh, guy with your training mm -hmm. you, you just wanted all exactly. you all you wanted to do is get there faster than you than you could possibly imagine and so your idea was. I'm going to go harder. I'm going to add more. I'm going to do more volume. I'm going to do as much as I possibly can because that'll get me there faster. I would have progressed three times as fast had I been a little bit more calmer, more yeah, wise, totally. and slowed down. Right. I stopped, I slowed my own progress down so much because yeah. I was that young bull trying to run down the hill or whatever No, no, me rather too. than taking that time. Speaking of workouts... Um, you are working out in your garage now, right? Uh, are you so, all set up? Yeah, we're set up. So we have it. So I've done two workouts. I've done two workouts in there. I've had it for a little over a week and a half or so that I've had it. Now, what did you, I went in your garage. You had the, the, the PRX squat rack. You had the racks. You had, you the, had the plates on the walls. Yeah, I don't have quite the, the setup as we have at, at Truckee or here. Uh, but close, you know, <clears throat> I did all the, by the way, I did all the, um, mine doesn't look as pretty, right? It doesn't have all the colors, but I didn't realize how cheap the all black rubber plates are. I did are. the same for my house. That's yeah. my setup. Yeah. So the black, the black rubber plates are way cheaper than the, the cool color ones. Now for here in our studio, we're on camera. Yeah, we want to display it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's money well spent for here, whatever, mm -hmm. but you know, for home and where I don't have a platform and mats and stuff like that, I'd rather have the rubber plates that we can bounce off the off yeah. the ground. So I got all black. So everything and so it all looks good. It looks. Uh, you so know, you got bar. You have dumbbells. I have dumbbells. So only got, only up to fifty pounds though right now. Oh, that's for when you go really heavy. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but every day, so, max so, out days. So yeah, we only uh, we only have up to fifty pounds in the dumbbells. I have a couple kettlebells. I got a uh, the barbell obviously from them. The rack. I got everything obviously to mount too. Like that. To, I wanted it so I can fit all three cars in the garage and the whole setup, no problem. Well, when With you the fold the cage up against uh, the wall, plus the, the weights on the wall, you're literally, I mean, how much would you say the distance is off the wall? Not even seven inches, it's, six inches it's, or it's, less. I wish I had this back in the day. Oh, it's, it is the most uh, brilliant. And here's the thing too, is that, 
that it's sturdy as shit. It's sturdier the, than yeah, a normal cage. Yes, it's way sturdier, and it's so it, the the design on it is, is brilliant. And I mean, it's, there's a reason why they're, they're they have constant. safety bars you could put on the bottom yeah. if, you want, if you want to work yeah. out on your own. Yeah, yeah. So I got all I got all that stuff, and I've worked out in there twice. Um, I it's still I, I stand by what the the debate that we had that continued on in our forum right afterwards mm. about. Oh the, yeah, I actually have something to say about that. Oh, you do. So did you have you gone through there lately to see what the comments were? Because okay, so the debate this was episodes ago. I don't remember. I don't know how long ago it was, but the debate was if people are going to be more consistent working out at home versus going to a gym. Adam said no, they'll be less consistent because the gym improves consistency because you drive there. It's more serious. It's not just there or whatever. He made it a compelling point. I said. Home gyms will make you more consistent because you don't have barriers, right? You don't have to drive anywhere. You don't have to put on any special clothes, listen to whatever you want. You can work out with your kids next to you. So we had a bit of a debate, yeah. and then it went on the forum, and people in the forum were kind of sounding off with their comments and their opinions. Have you gone back and looked at all the I comments? have, and here and I do- Have I, you noticed any trends? Yeah, they're, they're leaning your way, for sure. But here's well, besides what- besides that. Well, uh, here's what I'll, I'll say, though, about that. There's a very self-selection bias going on in the forum. You have people, first of all, podcast listeners already are typically, you know, higher intelligence, motivated to grow and learn. Self-discipline is going to fall into that category, mm -hmm. too. You have people that have access to the private forum like we do. A lot of our programs are at-home type of programming. So, of course, a majority of those people are going to say that, oh, I have lots of success with the at-home working out or I'm more consistent with that and because they're those type of people. I think the the majority. I still believe. Uh, so you think the less s serious someone is, the more la more consistent they'll be with a gym. I do. Really, I do because because of the, the the points that I brought up before is when you drive there and you get there, you're you're there. And yeah, you, but you still got to drive. Yeah, there. but here's the thing. Here's the conversation that happens to me. It just happened. One of the two workouts I had. I one, bet you they've done a study on one. It. Maybe was a, can find one. one was a great workout. And one of them was an okay workout, which was fine. Didn't have to. I didn't have to crush it that day. But what's really easy to do when you're home is to go. Ah, that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough. I can always. I'll, or I'll finish up a couple more sets. Yeah, I mean, later you are on. not. You are not that serious. <laughs> <laughs> no. You, okay. So I found. So here's what I did. Yes, more people were leaning towards what I said. I just think it's because I'm right. But here's here's the other thing. That I, <laughs> just kidding. Here's the thing that I noticed though. More. It was a majority of women liked the home workout. More often, oh, that's what you were looking than for the men. The, there were more guys, and there were still more guys that like the home workout. And I think you might be right. There's probably is there definitely is a self selection bias there going on. But there were more women that like to work out at home versus at the gym. And I have some I have some theories as to why. I think the uncomfortable factor of working out in a gym yeah, affects I'll, women way I'll, more. I'll get behind me. I'll get behind that because so they're was much a, more likely. Hundred percent. I, I I would I would say make the case that. More than half, if not a much greater percentage. Well, and juggling schedules, like having to yes. to, to, to do all right, these being things, a mom, yeah, and, yeah, pick still, all these things yeah. up, like be all kinds of places at once, and to be able to to carve out like a significant amount of time is always a big. That's issue. fair. I'll get behind that 100. Yeah. percent Yeah, I definitely think that. Um, yeah, yeah. If if you ask me to compare moms, right? If moms was the category, which we have a lot of moms in our mm -hmm. forum and stuff, I would definitely think that. The at-home gym probably serves them the best out of like all the demographics of people that are using the gym or go or using the at-home. Yeah. Level. Now here's the thing: the female um, consumer base is the largest. They're the biggest consumer base for all things for most things fitness. They're they're like that for most markets. Most markets, women yeah, are health the, in general right? are the are the are the largest consumers for most markets. But for fitness, they still are. I know in gyms. If you look at gym memberships, uh, and that includes studios and all that stuff, women are, there's a greater percentage. But when you look at home fitness, women dominate. If you count all women's fitness, including mm -hmm. videos, DVDs, you know, uh, extra, you know, different types of exercise equipment, they definitely dominate. So, but I do think a lot yeah, of look that. Look at the Thigh Master. Oh yeah, that was that was that's a, the big highest selling highest piece of selling fitness product. Equipment. Yeah, in the fitness category. What was it? I remember you got. We looked it up one day. It was it was, it was the thigh master. No, 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 oh, no the numbers. Like the number it doesn't it was, make sense. It was something ridiculous. It was right? insane. It was pure. That's a, such a great example of how effective marketing is. It was the stupidest thing in the world. Right, right. Freaking I, padded spring. Everybody's house had a, a thigh master when I was a kid. No, totally. every every single person. Now house. let's uh, transition back over to what I wanted to originally ask you guys, which is family updates. So you know, okay. for a while there, we were on the kick of, especially right after. Uh, uh, your son, 
uh, doing the dad talk. And, and I know I get a lot of people that message that are asking me updates on things. So I want to get an update on uh, Aurelius, where are we at right now? I know the, the only thing we're hearing right now is that you don't sleep, right? Yeah. So I'm assuming that's, yeah, that's still going that's on. That's all that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, no progress, no nothing. He no. is just... He's um, he's now about four, a little older than four and a half uh, months old. And he's very aware. He's a very aware little kid anyway. He's always looking around. If you ever see him, you guys see videos of him. He's kind of yep. staring and watching people. He's starting to now have a little bit of separation anxiety. So we went over to my aunt's house. And you know, other people were holding him, and before he could, he didn't really care. You could pass him around, but now you could see he's looking at mom and me, and then he'll cry a little bit because he wants us. So that's starting to happen, and I think the next, if, if I recall correctly, because we we have this app and stuff that tells you like all the leaps that they have. Mm-hmm. The next one is he's going to start to recognize phrases if they're in the if they're in a certain context. So like things like "Don't do that" or "Okay, it's time for bed." He's going to start to recognize those things. So that's going to be fun. Have I ever told you guys what Katrina does for Max with the whole no thing? Have I ever told you guys? Have she I says should? no, thank you. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I was tearing that with somebody else and like, oh my God, I'm, I'm still waiting for when those words come out for the first time to see how well that ends up like yeah. working if he well, actually does well, that. Well, so here's yeah. something that's really cool, right? So my older kids, I have my, my son's 15, my daughter's 11. They're, they're, they're similar, but they're also different in certain areas. One way that they're different is my son is super touchy-feely. Right, so when I was a kid, I was very touchy feely. If I was sitting next to someone, I'd have to touch their hand. I like to hug a lot, like to kiss. I'm still kind of like that. He's like that. So even now at 15, if I go up and kiss him on the face, he doesn't like fight me and push me off like a normal 15 year old yeah. would do. Now my mm-hmm. daughter, she's got to be in the mood to be hugged. If she's not, she'll yell at me and or whatever. <laughs> And I tell, and I'm, and I listen because I want her to, to feel very. In Which is interesting. Her. You would think it would be the opposite, right? Now, if she's in the mood, she'll come sit on my lap or she'll hug me. But it's got to be on her terms, which is totally fine. I want her to feel like she owns, you know, her body or whatever. But she's not, at least not in comparison to my son. She's, she's like a cat. Much yes, exactly. <laughs> so cats are like now. That. Now here's the deal. My ex, my ex wife was not the touchy feely one. I was the touchy feely one. So I could see one took over, you know, took after one, and one took after the other. Mm-hmm. Now Jessica. Very touchy feely like me, so I'm like, I wonder if Aurelius is going to be like like, like that, super right? affectionate, dude. This little baby, okay. If I kiss him on his face, and I just, I'll literally just leave my, keep kissing his cheek. He like, if he's looking at something, he'll close his eyes and go, mm. you can hear <laughs> he's making like, a, mm. yeah. And then, if, and then if you stop, he like leans his head back and he doesn't know how to kiss, but he he opens his mouth and he just like puts it on my face you know, like he's tried to kiss. Yeah. Oh man, it melts me. Absolutely <laughs> melts me. I love it. I love so it. I have the first um, like moment of like, I failed as a dad. Like I, uh, my first like, f- like, and then everybody will tell you. And by the way, save the DMS. I don't need everybody to, I'm not doing this to, you know, get you to, Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about Adam, whatever. You know, I get those every time I talk about shit like this. Right. I get it. It's, it is going to be okay. But I had the first like, fuck, I fucked up. Why did I not think of that? Or why did I not do that? And I've shared on the podcast and with you guys many times, like he is just naturally drawn to music, right? Mm-hmm. So he just, he loves, he loves music. I, you can, he could be totally distracted with something else. I fire music up or put, you know, YouTube, you know, country music videos on. He will drop what he's doing, come over, sit in my lap just to listen to I've music. I've seen it. And he dances. You've seen all this stuff, right? So he's all into the music. He, not quite into the basketball like I'd like him to be, but he's into the music like crazy. Okay. So... Here I and and we're you know we're we're trying to get the, the encourage the nanny to do more like educational stuff because we're starting to get closer to two years old and we're getting close to that age where you can start he can really start to pick things up and start to put things together and learn right and uh, I I don't oh it's my cousin my cousin Stephanie who you guys know she was sharing with me the the homeschooling program that she has and her two she has two younger ones right now and they are like some of the smartest kids I've ever met. And she attributes it to the homeschooling program. And one of the things that they do is they teach through song. So these, and they teach history and economics and they teach everything through the science behind it. Yeah. Right. Through song. Mm-hmm. And, and what they do is every year they build on it. So, you know, the, the kids and she goes, it's a, she goes, it's amazing. We'll be watching some documentary and some, you know, somebody who I don't even know who, who they are, the kids will rattle off the when they were born, when they died, what they were famous for, all like just like all this stuff. And it's all from these songs. And where I was like, why did I not piece that together? Now I read to Max every single night consistently. I've never missed a night since he was born and very proud that we've we've been good about that. Yet 
I don't sing to him really. Mm-hmm. Not really. Like that's I don't, probably that's probably not a bad thing, dude. I don't know if you've have you heard <laughs> you must so, the shit of him. So I didn't even and just like maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago, or whenever I this information, uh whenever she told me this, it, like the light bulb went off and right away I started like, you know, singing the ABCs, you know, and like with rhythm to him. Mm-hmm. Already, he's like he picks up the beat. He wants to do it with me. He, you could see him trying to. Oh, that's brilliant! I'm like, oh my god, where yeah. was it? Why was I not thinking of that earlier? Because of how how quick he was drawn to music. Mm-hmm. I should have. Pl- and they tell you that, right? Like that's the thing. We you you watch your kids. They're all so unique and so different. And I think the goal as parents is to be aware of those things mm-hmm. and learn to to steer them in that because they like it already. And what did I fuck up by not being on top he's, of that? He's and still younger. I know, yeah, I know, I know. But you know, you know this. You know what's crazy is that they 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 think that's how humans passed on, of course, uh, information before we, we wrote things down or knew how to do that. Yeah, stuff. and that's Song why you re- story. Yeah, and you remember things with songs. You remember th- you could recite all the lyrics of your favorite song, but yeah. if it wasn't a song, you know how hard it would be to memorize the lyrics. And that's why I remember those stupid jingles from commercials. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just fucking burned in my brain. Yeah, and and you're and, it's, and it, here's the thing: it makes sense. You like music too on top of that it right. makes sense that you remember all those things and it was like this light bulb went off when when she was telling me this about her kids but that's thought, good news now you know i like, know all right how, so he's gonna respond right so and i'm and so i'm already starting to implement I, right away too i went on you can look this up i can't remember what they all were off the top of my head but there's like the top 10 teaching songs mm-hmm. for kids at that age and everything so something mm-hmm. to look out i just so anybody else who's got a kid out there that is drawn to music like again that's you know you double down in that area and and, and push in that oh, direction the squats right. are good for the glutes yeah. and quads. <laughs> bench is good for the pecs yeah. yeah something like that anatomy in there hey i hope you're enjoying the podcast look real quick before we get to the questions Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our fitness and health guides. We have a lot of them. They're all totally free. You can download them, learn a lot. If you like our information, you'll love our free guides. Again, it's uh, mindpumpfree.com. Go check it out. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is William from New Mexico. Hey, William, how can we help you? Hey, guys. uh, I'd like to start out by thanking you guys for everything that you do. I mean, you've changed... uh you've changed the way that I work out, really changed my life. And, uh, a lot of the dudes in my department, I've been a volunteer firefighter for coming on three years now. And I'm finally making a step to apply to a career department, um, making some good progress in the application process. And the whole time they've been talking about, you know, the style of, you know, bro lifting isn't, isn't going to cut it, um, for the rigorous Academy. They said, you know, it's, it's going to be more similar to CrossFit style lifts. And then obviously, you know, running stairs and push ups and whatnot for burpees for, for additional PT. So I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions on, you know, what kind of workouts I should be focusing on to get myself prepared. Um, currently I do like a hypertrophy and strength cycle. You know, I learned it from you guys, of course, but, uh, that's currently what I'm at now. And I just want to see, you know, what should I be doing now to, to prepare to keep myself safe and and be ready to do this a uh, map map strong and he's whooping everybody's ass yeah. is doing crossfit oh yeah map map strong would be a great program for that you know the, the the best thing you can do is number one a majority of your training should mimic uh whatever tests they're going to put you through so if there's for example i know um i've trained uh, firefighters in the past and and uh, i know in the past there was like a uh, one test was to pick up a a sandbag or a dummy that weighed, I don't remember the weight, it was like 150 pounds, they had to carry it over certain things and carry it for or certain- drag it. Drag it. And so we would do that um, as part of their training. So the more training you can do that mimics the type of testing and what you're going to do on the job, the better you're going to be at those things. Now on the side, there's definitely value to doing general strengthening exercises to build overall strength. And those are the, you know, the, those compound lifts that you probably heard us talk about so many times, your deadlifts, your overhead presses, your rows, zercher squats are excellent for probably what you're going to be doing a lot of, um, single leg exercises and rotation to prevent your, you from injuring yourself, but you got to train in a way that, uh, somewhat mimics what you're doing and then throw in some general strength, uh, type exercises. But a majority of what you're going to do is going to look like whatever test you're trying to to pass i would i would definitely uh if you don't have map strong we'll hook you up with that so i would run that pretty much how it, it, it's laid out for you and then what i would do is we have what are called work sessions in those and the work sessions are on the opposite days of like your foundational days in those work sessions 
I would I would take some of the exercises like Sal saying. So if you can get a hold of a, a sandbag or get a hold of a dummy or some of the exercises or tests that uh, you'll have to do, I would incorporate them into that work session. But the rest of the program, I'd follow it pretty closely to a T, man. I think that uh, it will give you everything as far as work capacity, upper body strength, leg core strength, uh, doing things like zercher movements, all that's in there. And I think that's a phenomenal program. Yeah. I think what, what gets in people's way oftentimes when they're training for something like what you're talking about is either one of two things. Either they don't fully understand uh, you know, what their training should look like and so they're not able to maximize the performance, or they're afraid of losing, you know, bodybuilder type gains. They're like, oh man, if I go off my, you know, my isolation exercises, if I stop training in this, you know, the split or whatever, and I train for this type of performance, I'm gonna lose some of my aesthetics. In a case like that, I, uh, you know, I would say you got to pick, you know, one or the other. It's like it's like when you play video games and you're you're building your character, and you got ten points, but you have to divide it up between stamina, endurance, you know, muscle strength, speed, you know, that kind of stuff. And you you put it all in one, you're gonna you're not gonna be able to contribute to the others. It's like that. That's that's kind of how real life is. So those are the two things that'll get in your way. But if you're okay with allowing your body to look the way it's gonna look to maximize your performance to do your job the best. Then train specifically yeah. for that. If- Functional training is going to be at the yes. utmost uh, priority. And so, yeah, I, I'll just echo what these guys have said. But really, um, you know, in terms of like special specialization for, you know, what you're trying to do, um, I would really focus in on movement and joint health. And so making sure that you're always checking yourself and making sure that, uh, you know, you have the the proper range and mobility and, and joint support uh, to keep keep your body healthy because, you know, you guys are putting a lot of demand on, on your body, you know, beyond this test and, and and this rigorous thing that you're trying to do, you know, going into that. It's, it's really sus- the sustainability of maintaining that functional strength uh, is, is everything in a job like that. William, do you know what the test looks like? So as far as the physical test for application goes, um, I've already passed those. Um, what what we're looking at now is an 18-week academy where it's Monday through Friday and it's um, you know academics as well as the physical side of it. So the physical side of it, I mean, they're going to go and have you do workouts. And from what I understand, it's, it's kind of like a mix between HIIT training and some CrossFit style stuff. So it's 18 weeks of what they say is rigorous, um, rigorous stuff like that. You do some running. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely concerned about, about my endurance as well as, you know, the, the mobility, like you were saying, my mobility is garbage. So I know I need to, I need to so, work on that. So I, you know, so do this. We got, we're, we're going to hook you up with Maps Strong. So you got that for free. We have the Maps Prime Pro webinar literally make it a make it a habit at least a couple times a week that you just go through that it's at uh, prime uh, prime pro webinar.com right doug Mm -hmm. so go to prime pro webinar.com i take you through about 50 minutes of mobility basically from the the feet all the way up to the neck and just follow it follow it take it you know you could do Mm -hmm. it in your living room at your house just make an effort to do that at least two or three times a week in conjunction with with map strong the amount of the first phase of map strong is like 20 rep shit. So you want to talk about building your work capacity and your stamina. Mm-hmm. You're going to get that right out the gates with phase one of that program. Yeah. What people don't realize, I mean, endurance training, uh, you know, you're going to adapt to that really quickly. What's going to really weather the storm is, you know, really focusing on your joint health and joint support. And so like Adam said, I really would highly suggest even the entire time through, uh, you know, your testing to, to really be cognizant of, of where you're joints are and how you can you know help keep them healthy yes sir um i I could be doing something wrong every time i try to go to that website for the webinar it says this session has expired and it's no longer available so i i'll try it again and well let me let me i'll I'll get doug on it right now hold on william let me get doug on it right now and uh, that would be a big big problem because i've been telling people to go there seems to be available still primeprowebinar.com so maybe you need to clear I'll, out I'll your cache, and uh, if you've tried to log in before, maybe that's what it's doing. It's going to an old page. I'm not sure. Yeah. So clear out your cache, and it should work. Okay. And if I if I so I'm a uh, a little indecisive. I've been listening to you guys for years, and I've wanted to buy one of your programs, but I've had a hard time deciding which one to do because I'm a, a mess. But 
Would you recommend, because I know for sure I, I'm worried about my mobility. Would you recommend Prime or Prime Pro? Because I'm a little bit confused on the difference so between the two. We're sending you. We're sending you right now. Strong for free. So you got that to follow, and then follow the the, the free webinar Prime Pro, and then that would be the one that I would invest in. And, and by the way, when you go through the the webinar, there's like a fifty percent off coupon that gets kicked to you afterwards. So go through that. Take advantage of the free stuff we're hooking you up with, and then if you were going to invest into another program, that I would I would get that to complement what you're doing. Yes, sir. Well, hey, I I really appreciate it, guys. I can't tell you much how much how much this means to me. It's all I want is to, you know, be successful in this career field. And uh, you've, like I said at the beginning, you've touched my life. You've touched uh, the lives of many dudes at the station. You know, I've turned them onto your podcast. I showed them the one you did about first responders, you know, and we listened to that whole podcast together as a group, um, as well as some of the ones like how to be a winner and whatnot. I mean, you guys just produce phenomenal content and I appreciate it. Awesome. Man. Awesome. Yeah. Thank best, you. best of luck to you. And thanks for saving lives, huh? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it, gentlemen. You have a good one, brother. You too. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can't stress enough the specificity. Specificity. I know of, it's hard. I, uh, I messed it up earlier. Uh, of, uh, of training, you know, it's like if you're, if you want to get good at specific things, train those things. Right. That should be the core of your workout, and then the other stuff will supplement it. I think a lot of people make mistakes by, you know, they don't do the specific stuff that applies to what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. They focus too much on general stuff, which you'll get carryover for sure. No, but not, if you have to, like, let's say you have to jump over a wall, you have to drag a 150-pound mm -hmm. dummy, if nothing will get you better at doing those things than doing those things. Practice yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. If, you can, if you have access to a wall, you have access to a, a sandbag or a dummy that you can drag nothing is going to get you better for that for that test or for whatever they're going to put you through than that but that being said uh map strong is like yeah. the work i mean that thing is all work capacity oh, yeah. you're going to build a big old motor with map yeah, strong yeah he's going to i guarantee if he does that leading up into all this training he's going to smoke everybody that's that's doing crossfit our next caller is lisa from michigan hey lisa how can we help you hey everyone how's it going good great just okay good. Yeah, I guess okay. For Adam. <laughs> so, Just, we're great. <laughs> <laughs> great. All right. So first of all, I know everyone says this, but I just got to say it too. Love your show. Listen to pretty much everyone for about a year now. Um, so my question has to do with leg training, lower body workouts. Um, I was introduced to heavy weight lift, heavy weightlifting probably about five or six years ago. Um, I was a runner, uh, long distances, and someone suggested that I work on building my posterior chain in order to um, get faster, actually, and showed me some exercises, did them, they worked, and I got faster, and I was hooked. So I ended up following various bodybuilding type programs over the years. And something that I have noticed is that my legs grow so fast and so easily. And as a female, I mean, it's not like I'm looking for a thigh gap or anything, <laughs> but I struggle to lose body fat in my thighs and then they grow really easily. So I'm looking for some guidance as far as, I mean, how do I change my lower body training? Um, I did purchase a few of your programs because they were on sale and I wanted to get a closer look at them. So I purchased multiple of them. Um, right now, the way I train is I do a lower body, an upper body, and then more of like a full body Metcon. So like lower upper are very like heavy, traditional weightlifting. Um, and it looks like in your programming, there's multiple days of heavy legs, well, the various programs that I looked at. And it seems like whenever I've tried to do multiple days of heavy legs over the years, my legs grow. Now I, I do own a calipers and a flexible tape measure. So I know for a fact that like my body fat has stayed the same 
but my muscle has gotten bigger. Like that's where the girth is coming from. I don't really feel like doing a ton of cardio <laughs> is the answer um, and leaving out all heavy weightlifting, but just kind of wondering if you could, I don't know, tell me some modifications that I could make to your programs or if you have other ideas. Mm. Okay. I got lots of ideas. Yeah, that so, was that was a short uh, winded uh, question. Yeah. Thanks. So <laughs> so here's a here's the deal, Lisa. We got it though. I feel like we got everything. No, I, yeah, this is actually quite you common. Still had me it's there. very common. Comment. So here's what'll happen if you follow a maps program. You'll wake up the next day with just way too much muscle. It's really powerful uh, and effective. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I, not, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's not that's not gonna happen. Okay, so a couple things. Number one, a uh, question for you. Are you still doing any running? Yes. Um I not the longer distances anymore. I do one day of like a sprints, basically. That's it. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, 20 minutes, done. Okay, okay. And then I like to be able to keep myself in good enough running shape where I can go out and run three to five miles. So okay. I do that maybe once a week. Okay, so okay. So that's not, not too much, especially compared to what you were probably doing before. Now, right, what I was training for a 25K before. Got it. Okay, so what you're saying is quite common. First off, as a female, you're going to store more body fat in your lower body. Not much you can, and actually, actually, believe it or not, that's a good thing. They show that when women store body fat, uh, mostly in their lower body, they tend to be healthier. They tend to have higher omega-3 fatty acids in their body. They tend to have healthier children. So that's like, that's not a bad thing. It's a very normal natural good thing but i know i can i can hear your frustration right you want more balance in your body you want the upper and lower body to match a little bit in that case right. in that case i would say this look when you do your full body routines train your upper body first and leave your legs for the end of the workout that should okay. make a difference and then number 2 reduce the volume of your lower body workouts you know a lot of people have uh, one part of their body that tends to respond faster than other parts of their body that's that's where the individualization comes mm -hmm. from when you when you change your routine, right? So if you're a guy and you're working out and your chest just grows real fast, but your arms don't seem to match, then you would put more focus on your arms, less on your chest. You can do this with your lower body as well, and you're not gonna gain more body fat in your legs as a result. You don't. There's no such thing. Spot reduction is is a myth. Mm -hmm. Your body burns body right. fat from you know wherever it wants. So I would do less volume. Right. Go ahead. I, I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> I would do more uh, more upper body work, less lower body work, save the lower body work for the end of your workout, and then use your, your calipers and your tape measure as a guide that points you in the right direction. And then I'll, I'll add to that. So I agree. Uh, and I think there's nothing wrong, too, with uh, adding a little bit more uh, endurance running. You know, in this case, like if you do that. Um, you definitely will lose more body fat, so you could run a little bit more. You could also uh, do like if there's a one of our programs where it calls for you to, you know, squat uh, twice in the week. You could exchange one of those out for like hip thrust instead, or do something like lunges or step ups to a balance. Maybe incorporate some stability training in there, or unilateral type of work instead of all the bilateral strength training, like that'll help. Um, this was something I had, uh, I, I dated a girl that was a competitor. She had a very, that she was, her quads were so overdeveloped that we literally would, when we were getting ready for showtime, um, all she would do is lunges. That's all we did. We wouldn't allow her to do any squats or really, really heavy lifting. So you can definitely okay. modify the workout like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says you have to bilateral heavy squat all the time. So if you see an extra, and if you do something like, hip thrust instead of doing this on squat day. So follow our program. You see that it calls for, you know, you know, backloaded barbell squats. And you, instead you go do hip thrust yeah. instead. And, and then your butt yeah. will just get bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You get, you, you, you build the butt, <laughs> you build the butt, but then you don't develop right. the, the thighs and the quads as much. Right. Well, this so, is the conundrum we've always been in with even writing a program because, you know, there, there's general attributes that we're, we're trying to, to, to put out there and, and hope that most people will respond yeah. Too, but like in this case, like there are you know opportunities to to add these modifications, adjust things, you know, reduce some volume where you see where your growth is really rapid, and, and that's something too. I experienced this with a couple clients who you know their traps grew a little too uh, you know too pronounced, and so it's like it you know there's certain things individually that uh, you can modify and adjust and tweak, and so it's good to have communication, and that's why we also have a forum where a lot of this discussion happens. Also, keep in mind too that we don't or I wouldn't uh, recommend completely 
completely eliminating like leg stuff just because uh, right. leaning for leaning out purposes, that's a huge advantage for you, right? So you burn the most calories doing leg exercises. Most of our muscle is in our legs. So that's going to speed your metabolism up by having muscular legs. So if you were to completely eliminate leg stuff, it, you would also have a harder time leaning out because of that. So it does work. Exactly. In our, it does and work. That's where I was, that's yeah. where I was feeling kind of stuck. Like right. I'm in a light calorie deficit right now. Mm-hmm. And to lose a little body fat and sure enough, my upper body's leaning out, my lower body's not, but yet I, I'm totally on board with like heavy compound lifting. I realize, you know, that's, <laughs> that's probably the solution, but yet, you know, so should I more sort of discontinue or avoid the concept of progressive overload then? And then just. Not necessarily, just, not necessarily, but there's, I don't know if you've listened to the episode, but you should go listen to the episode that we did on uh, progressive overload. There's nine, I think we listed nine different ways to progressively overload. Progressive overload doesn't necessarily always right. mean adding more weight to the bar. Yeah, yeah. And you can just cut the volume down. You know, here's what, here's okay. With someone like you, if you're very gifted in the leg department with muscle, and then you think to yourself, all right, I'm not going to go heavy anymore. I'm just going to do more reps. And then here's what will happen. You'll build more muscle as yeah. a result of doing that. So yeah. just cut the volume. That's yeah. it. Just cut the volume and okay. don't and don't prioritize your legs. When you do a full body workout, like we almost always, if we're, if we're writing a full body workout, the first exercises are lower body. They're the biggest movements, mm-hmm. most bang yeah. for most your buck. Taxing. I would save them for the end. When the you're done with, you, when you're yeah. done with all your yeah. upper body stuff, then you go do your legs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for calling yeah. in. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. No Have problem. a great day. Yeah, that's um uh, the longest question yet. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the award. <laughs> you know, I tell you, this is this is where bodybuilding's got a lot. Of, one area in bodybuilding that's got a lot of value is that bodybuilders are excellent at understanding how to slow down development in some areas and speed up development right. in others. Th- I love this client. Like, so I know I'm razzing her a little bit about the long-winded question, but. This is actually really common. Um, you know, a lot of people that come in the gym and they they want to you know change their body composition. There's normally areas they're either very happy with or they develop really well, or areas they don't. And this is where I I like our job, and it's mm-hmm. and it's not as cookie cutter as oh go follow Maps Aesthetic, yes. yeah. you know, or oh go follow this program. I have to be able to modify and adjust, which is how we wrote these always. We've always never or we've never said this is the perfect program for everybody. It's, mm-hmm. you know, here, here's some general rules, but here's a great example of nothing. And, and what I love doing with a client like this, since almost everybody is is underdeveloped on the posterior chain, like I would get rid of a lot of the quad stuff and I'd focus more hamstring. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. do, you know, stiff-legged deadlifts and more deadlift stuff. I would do more good morning type of stuff. I would do movements that- Yeah, because I've almost never, I don't think I've ever had a female client say that their posterior chain was overdeveloped. Right, right. It was always quads. That, and that's why I went to the hip thrust area because normally it's it's normally their thighs, right? They're, they don't like that their thighs keep growing, getting bigger. But most girls are not, are completely okay with adding an inch to their butt, you their know, hamstrings. or their hamstring. Because here's the thing too, you develop those hamstrings, even if they grow in size, it gives this this great look on the backside. And, and it's just, it's the number one overlooked muscle yeah. on both men and women. This is just the perfect example that, you know, like once we get so divided in these camps, like, oh, well, I'm just going to power lift. I'm just going to CrossFit. Like there's so many individual differences to, to account for. That's Bodybuilding right. is a great option to really mm-hmm. sculpt the body. So it's, you know, it's a valid method, you know, and all of these can work and we can interweave them together. Our next caller is Graydon from Alberta, Canada. Hey, Graydon, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Um First off, just want to say, absolutely love you guys. Found your show just a little over two years ago, and it's absolutely helped my training a ton. So um, just wanted to ask, um, I played basketball and football like my whole life growing up, and my off-season training was always centered around like bodybuilding-type movements. Um, but I've wanted to start a uh, powerlifting um, program, and I'm wondering what are the benefits and detriments of incorporating bodybuilding movements into a powerlifting program? Oh, okay. Mm. Great, great question. You know, of all the strength uh, sports, I would say bodybuilding and powerlifting have uh, probably the most to learn from each other. There's a lot of value that powerlifters can get from 
doing certain bodybuilding movements or even focusing on hypertrophy. And there's a lot of value that bodybuilders can get from, from you know, learn that they'll learn from powerlifters. So here's the stuff that I would avoid for powerlifting. I would avoid lots of the isolation movements uh, or, or overemphasis on lots of isolation movements. Um, you know, lots of side laterals and, you know, kickbacks and those kind of exercises. There's a little bit of value for powerlifting in that, especially if there's a, an imbalance, but not a ton. Now, the value you get from bodybuilding for powerlifting really mainly revolves around the type of volume, the changing the angles, and a little bit of hypertrophy. If you get a powerlifter and you get them to add a little bit of muscle or size, they're, they're, all of a sudden their stability goes up and they feel like they're more in control of the bar. So you could do higher reps, uh, cycles of higher reps, uh, unilateral training. So powerlifters do a lot of bilateral type training, but if they went through a cycle where they did you know, lunges, for example, uh, front squats, um, single leg type exercises, when they go back to their powerlifting, they typically notice better stability in their lifts. They feel more stable um, in their in their heavy lifts. So those are the things I'd look at uh, because bodybuilding is really good for just for size and for balancing the body out a little bit more so than powerlifting, I would say. So there's one major detriment that Sal didn't address that I think you should definitely know. Uh, that both bodybuilding and powerlifting do a disservice to athletics is mm -hmm. that you, a lot of the training is like in the sagittal plane. Like everything is. Well, I'm surprised you. Uh, I was going to comment that you had bodybuilding as the uh, the go to training program for those sports. Yeah, so that that's the the real bummer about both those. I mean, sports is so much rotational strength, right? There's so much in that. You if you get really really strong uh, in in one plane. Uh, it does really hinder that, and and that's a lot of times where like injury happens. So I, I know where my injury happened uh, playing basketball. I was because I train like this. I train mostly in the the you know power lifting, bodybuilding type of world or modality, and then I still like to go pick up a basketball every once in a while. And it just, I mean that's where I hurt myself. Yeah, uh, great. Is your question to get better at uh, basketball, or is your question to get better at powerlifting? Better, better at powerlifting. Like I really want to make some like major strength gains. Yeah, but it's, he's also off. Seat. He's also you. Do you still play sports? No, no. This is just. Oh, uh, I said yeah. that was growing up. I played a lot of sports, and that's uh, I got it. all oh. I really knew about training was like watching Steve Cook videos got and it. training on yeah. my own. Got it. Yeah. Got okay. I misunderstood. So I was under the impression this is just off season because there's a lot of value yeah. in, in bodybuilding and powerlifting style workouts in an off season to any sport as long mm -hmm. as you just keep in mind all the stuff that I was talking about. But okay, so if you're not even worried, so but that's the thing you got to be careful of though. I just want to let you know that like if you start to move in this powerlifting bodybuilding world and if i don't know if you still get the itch to go play ball every now and then like i do uh I be, still do, yeah. yeah so be careful because you get really strong in one direction you ask the body to rotate left or right or turn in a sharp direction or you know slow down real quick and go the other way and it's just you haven't been training that way but yet your muscles are really strong from bodybuilding and powerlifting and that's a lot of time where the injuries occur well, just one thing I've noticed from bodybuilders that convert over to powerlifting, uh, especially with the deadlift, is just like technique wise, like a lot of like trying to really pull and, and you know, having their elbows just slightly bent to, to really like muscle up uh, the weight versus training their body to, you know, really master the technique of it and really apply, you know, the, the force uh, and get their, their body to to go through the, the proper mechanics of it. Uh, so, you know, spend some time not really like stacking the plates right away, but really like honing in on the, the, the technique of, of these main lifts. Yeah, I would go, I would go powerlifting uh, 80% or maybe 90% of the time, 10 to 20% bodybuilding. And you're going to get carryover. You'll get some good carryover. You know, for example, powerlifters nowadays, this was never the case before, but nowadays you see powerlifters doing bicep curls. I mean, they used to, they used to say, they used to make fun of doing curls, but then people were tearing their biceps. And so now you see more of them doing bicep curls here and there to prevent that from happening. So, um, and same thing with tricep, uh, you know, exercise, you see them doing more press downs and cable exercises. So, you know, if it's 80 to 90% powerlifting, 10 to 20% bodybuilding, you'll get great carryover for your powerlifting. Well, great. Are you following, do you have any mass programs? Uh, no, I want to start Maps Power. Oh, yeah, but I was go. one. I guess is it? Are you saying that it's better to like in a powerlifting program to 
do your powerlifting program and then incorporate a week or two of bodybuilding do or follow, do bodybuilding movements in your powerlifting fo program. Follow MAPS Powerlift. I would just focus on powerlifting. Yeah, fo yes. follow MAPS Powerlift. It's got everything you need. You'll, and, be, you'll be set. Yeah, and you're, trust I mean, a good example of how good you'll still look. Don't worry. I don't know if you follow our, our buddy Ben Pollock, but Ben Pollock is a bodybuilder, powerlifter guy who goes back and forth between two, who's also who helped write that program with us. Yeah. But that's black belt oh, stuff. We got to master it first. Yeah, yeah. Just follow the MAPS Powerlift program. We'll send, we'll send that over to you, Graydon. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. I, I totally uh, misunderstood. Yeah. I it, know. When you were answering, I was listening to you. I was like, uh. I was thinking the same thing. Well, when yeah. I read, I play, I, oh, it says I played, right? So yeah. past tense. But you, I, I was assuming that, like, he said, and then he brings up off season. I thought he was going to go. I think but, he was just telling us his history. But he did still say that he will go play. So, and this is, this is both my big injuries that yeah. I've had have been because the last, you know, decade plus I've been, you know, bodybuilder, powerlifter guy. You're asking your body to do something different. Mm -hmm. You're putting a big engine in a car without great handling, for example. Yeah, that's right. Your and horsepower is going to increase. And so, yeah, yeah, if you're not, you know, maintaining the the quality and, and integrity of your joints, it's, you're going to feel it well, more. The irony is injuries always happen from lack of strength. It's just the lack of you know, specific strength, specific right? Strength. So you can get really strong in one area, but you're weak in others. And that means that you're going to, your, and it, your risk of injury and it, it, the risk of injuries increases absolutely because you know like you said you're i would if i was uh out of shape right as far as strength wise and i just laid off of playing basketball for let's say two years but wasn't lifting went back to playing basketball i would less likely be get injured yeah. but because i built all that horsepower up built all that muscle then went in there trying to do movements like that that's where you get well, in trouble now that i understand this question better it, it seems to me like a lot of what we answer to with people that really want to still incorporate their cardio they they don't want to lose Use, you know this endurance but meanwhile they want to build their strength well he wants to get into powerlifting and really like indulge in that but doesn't want to lose the bodybuilding thing you know yeah. part yeah. of it well, yeah, talk, about, talk about a, a, a modality though that really is going to you know, play well into, oh yeah you know, and, oh. and his question really is is there a detriment it's like well no not unless that's the majority of your training i mean yeah. bodybuilding training is gonna not give for you, looks not no for it's going to give you more stamina and that'll help with your powerlifting because bodybuilding is more volume typically higher reps you're going to be better at hypertrophy, which is good. You'll do more of the unilateral type exercises, which right. I've, you know, I've noticed in myself, uh, backing off the bilateral stuff, doing the unilateral stuff, go back to the bilateral stuff, and then I'm able to surpass my previous best. But 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 keeping like just taking the time to just focus on that, you know, is yeah. you're going to get the skill of it, and then you could get creative and interweave them together. But really, to just focus on that's going to be massive for him. Our next caller is Tina from Texas. Hey, Tina, how can we help you? Hey, how are you doing? Good. Um, all right, so I have two questions. Um, my first one is about um, calorie surplus, and my second one is about IF. So um, as far as the calorie surplus goes, um, real quick um, background, I'm 51. About two years ago, I started um, getting some menopausal symptoms, Everything I was doing before wasn't working anymore, so um, I dove in, starting to research, and I, um, I was able to recomp pretty good af about you know after a year and a half by following macros and um, lifting more consistently. And so I wanted to step it up, and I hired an online coach in December because I just um, my goal was just a little bit more mu muscle definition. And um, she put me on a six-day split, three leg days, which was great. I'm loving it. That's what I'm doing right now. And um, she put me on a meal plan that's like six meals a day, typical, you know, grilled chicken, rice. Um, I was able to follow it. I lost some body fat, but I'm still feeling like um, I'm not getting the muscle definition I want. And I'm wondering if it's because I'm not eating enough. That's what I've read. You got to be in a calorie surplus to gain muscle. And then as far as the IF goes, I've always really liked IF. I like the way it makes me feel. I like the health benefits of it. Um, but I've read that if you don't break your fast within a certain time, a um, certain amount of time after your workout, that you could risk uh, muscle loss. Let's stick so, to the let's stick to the first one first. Let's get the yeah. first one first. And let me ask, okay. Tina, I have a question for you. Uh, did you ask if your personal trainer listens to Mind Pump first? No, uh, I did not. Oh, First Tina, mistake. Tina, <laughs> damn it, Tina! That should be that. I tell everybody <laughs> if you're gonna hire a trainer, that should be the first question you guys ask right now. Yeah. So that that would be the first. The second question I have for you: Where are the calories at right now? 
So um, I started in December. And when she gave me the plan, um, she didn't give me calories. She just gave me, um, you know, ounces and follow this plan. When I calculated it, it was like 1,200 calories. And I asked her, I'm like, is this right? And she said, well, yeah, they're going to vary a little. I do have one high carb day. Um, so they were like around 12, 1300, but I listened to my body and if I'm working out and I get hungry, I will eat. I'll make sure I make some good choices, but good for so, you. you know, I wasn't following her plan a hundred percent. I was listening more to my body. Good for you. That's that. And that's better because a six day split. And I don't, I don't know what, what's how, how tall and how heavy you are, but that's, uh, that's not very many calories, especially somebody who's training, uh, that aggressively. So that would be yeah. the first thing, uh, you're, you're correct in the idea. If we're going to try and build muscle, I, unless you were a total newbie, you're going to some. You know, you will see some newbie gains uh, of building muscle when you're on low calorie. But for the most part, uh, in order to build muscle, build that metabolism up, we're going to want to increase calories. And so, I would actually push you more in the direction of like a MAPS anabolic type of program, which is only a three day a week full body routine, and increase your calories to help build some muscle, speed the metabolism up before I take you back the other direction. Yeah, your calories are a little low and because you've been cutting for a little while and uh, you know, your age, you know, even you talked about your age a little bit. I would I, exactly what Adam said, bump your calories up and try to gain strength and gain muscle and what you might find um, is you'll actually get leaner as a result. You might find that you'll gain muscle and lose body fat at the same time. At 1200 calories, you have nowhere else to go, right? If you stay at 1200 calories and you're not as lean as you want to be, the only way you can, I guess, the only direction you can go is by dropping your calories even more, and that's just not sustainable, at least not with the clients I've ever you know, worked with. It's too low, so bump the calories up, and I would go for strength. I would go for increasing strength, and you'll, you'll, you're likely to find that you're going to get leaner as a result. At, at, at the very least, you'll maintain your leanness, gain some muscle and speed up your metabolism, in which case it makes the, it's going to make the future cut uh, much easier. As far as intermittent fasting is concerned, uh, no, that's false. You're not going to lose muscle if there if you don't eat food for you know for a day or whatever or 12 hours. That doesn't work that way. However, too frequent intermittent fasting um, in people can sometimes be a stress on the body, and this is more common with women and more common with women uh, past uh, the age of 40. Uh, you start to see hormone imbalances pop up a little bit more often uh, in women than in men by utilizing things like intermittent fasting. Now, the reason why you feel so good doing it, there's a couple reasons. One is it boosts catecholamine production. This is like your epinephrine and your, you know, these kind of feel good energy hormones. Cortisol goes up a little bit, which feels good and it gives you energy. Uh, but over time, this can be a little bit of a stress. So I would limit fasting to, you know, once a week or something like that uh, at the most. Um, uh, just if you like the way that it feels, otherwise I wouldn't worry too much about it. D Doug, did we, uh, what was the name of the, was, did we do an episode titled intermittent fasting is making you fat or something like that? That sounds familiar. Yeah. I'll look it up. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can look that up while we're talking to her so we can give that to her. If not, if I don't get it to you by the time we hang up, I'll definitely give it in this podcast. So make sure Tina, if you haven't listened to that episode, we did a really good, like full in depth dive on the pros and cons of intermittent fasting, how we think most people should use it, how most people use it wrong. Uh, okay. I think that, I think that episode will, will probably answer all the questions that you have around that. Um, and then we're going to shoot you over MAPS Anabolic. I'm assuming you don't have it. Do you not have MAPS Anabolic? No. Okay, we're going to shoot that over to you. I've for been looking at your program. Yep. Um, I really want to um, get into one of your programs. Um, the only thing is I just want to make sure I can do them at home with my weights. We, I have um, dumbbells up to 50 pounds. We have, we have, so we, have we have the sure option for you. To do All of them. We actually have, we, we, last year when the whole COVID thing happened, we actually made mods for all, most all of our programs. About 90% of them have uh, at home mods that all you need is a set of dumbbells and you're fine. So they all okay. come. They all come with a mod. So we're gonna send you an anabolic for free, so you can follow that. Uh, slowly increase your calories. Don't in don't increase them a ton. You know, just and I, actually the way you're doing it probably kind of right now uh, is probably perfect. If you're hungry, feed yourself. Just make a good choice. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that uh, I I'm gonna offer to you for free is to come in our forum. So we have a private forum where okay. you can you can come in there and we've, we've besides the the three of us are in there. We've got tons of, you know, uh, nutritionists. Uh, we've got other personal trainers in there, uh, mobility specialists, a lot of brilliant minds and a lot of great people going through our programs. 
and you got questions about your diet, you got questions about your training program, what's going on, you put them in there and you'll get that same type of feel that you're probably paying for with a online coach, only you get it for free once you're inside the forum. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, great. Thanks for calling. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good day. No you problem. too, Tina. Yeah, that old, uh, you know, online coach approach of yeah, as soon as she said that, eat I was this like, food. Uh, yeah, just this eat this food. Cringeworthy. Follow this meal plan. They didn't even tell her the calories. Um, here's your workout and, six days a week. And by the way, okay, you put anybody on a grilled chicken rice, twelve hundred calories, six meal a day, uh, six days a week lift. Yeah, they're, they're gonna, gonna lose weight. Yeah, and six days body part split lift. Uh, you're gonna lose weight and lean lean out a little bit for sure. So. The initial results that you see is not is not a reflection of good coaching or good training. It's like this person obviously should have focused first on building strength and increasing calories, build her metabolism up before she went into a especially a twelve hundred calorie. I mean, and again, we didn't ask uh, how much she weighs. I'm assuming she's more than ninety eight pounds though. Yeah. So I mean, that's definitely super low calorie and uh, not and I wouldn't be training her 6 days a week on a split a full body you know 2 to 3 day a week program would serve her much better totally our next caller is Whitney from Ontario Canada hey Whitney how can we help you hey guys thanks for taking my call um my question is it relates to working out with your spouse my husband and I very different backgrounds. I have about 13 years of experience weightlifting, um, powerlifting, Olympic lifting. I competed in CrossFit. Don't come at me for that. <laughs> um, for the better part of a decade. <laughs> and uh, so since then, I haven't really had that much of a structured routine. And my husband definitely has ha not had one, nor has he had the experience of um, the Olympic lifting, the powerlifting, that technical stuff. And so I'm wondering which one of your programs would be something that maybe both of us could go through together. And we also work out at home. Help us a little bit more about him. So like, where, where would you consider like his, like his fitness level? I know you say he does no weightlifting background. Yeah, like but how's his mobility? Yeah. So. Is he, how out of shape is he, or is he not? Is he relatively fit? Like, what, yeah. I'm not going to let him listen to this. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you need, you need, you need to be honest with us. Yeah. So we have a good idea what to recommend. I know. I know. Thanks guys. We know um, who's the strong No, one. his mobility is not great. He, um, he travels a lot for work, so he's in his vehicle quite a bit. Um, and he has lots of, he snowboarded, um, competitively previously and has quite a few injuries from that. Um, so in his day-to-day -day job, he's fairly active, but there's no, definitely no focus on mobility or anything like that. So he definitely needs to improve in that capacity. Okay. All right. So here's the challenge. The challenge is going to be yeah. finding a routine that is appropriate for him, but you're not going to get bored doing with your background. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, uh, we're not gonna be able to satisfy both. Um, so okay. I'm going to recommend the best program for him. You can follow okay. along and take your time, and then after he follows, he goes through that program, move to something else. But MAP Starter is where I'd start him off. If his mobility's lacking, yeah. he's, he's never worked out, it's the best program to get started with. After yeah. MAPS Starter, then move to MAPS Anabolic. That really? would be the next program. Really? Yeah. Okay. See, I, I don't know. It's, I mean, of course, we're, we are making assumptions, right? Because he's not- I'd a, have to like assess I, him. I feel like-, I feel like Yeah, okay, of course. I'm, I'm picturing you guys as a couple right now, and you don't look like your typical couch potato type of couple right now. you got an ex-CrossFit yeah. girl, 13 years lifting. He was- a, he was he did A lot snow. of injuries, though. He, yeah, okay. So, that, so we can address mobility stuff, but I feel like as an athletic background, as athletic as he was- you know, and I'm sure he's not completely yeah, the opposite. I'm doing of that. mass performance. So I, I like either maps performance or anabolic with mobility component, and then she can actually do a lot of that with him. Well, if you do mm -hmm. maps anabolic, you can definitely start in pre phase, and that's where I would start you. I would not have him start. I agree in with that. I, I would not have that. him start in phase one, and then you know you're gonna okay. have to you're gonna have to really watch and see how he does. Because here's my my worry is that you're gonna start yeah. him off on. Barbell squats, overhead presses. He lacks the mobility. He's gonna he's gonna potentially injure himself or start to feel pain. And then you're gonna have to back right. off even more. And then here's a deal: you might yeah. lose the momentum of getting him motivated to work out with you. So, so right. that's that's the challenge, right? So mm -hmm. that's why I said map starter. I think it's very safe. Right. He's, he's gonna get gains. He's gonna build muscle on it. He's gonna get stronger on it. A yeah. lot of, there's a lot of stability involved uh, with map starter. Then from there, yeah. it's it's not that hard to move forward with uh, maps anabolic. Going too fast, too you know, too soon. That's yeah. gonna, that's going to take more time to come out of than going too slow. Going too slow is right. fine. There's nothing wrong with going, 
you know, too slow with the routine. So, so yeah. y- you can do either one, uh, you know, without doing an assessment on your husband. Um, yeah. you know, it's going to be hard for us to be more specific. Well, let's, let's do this for her. So I tell you, this is what we'll do. <laughs> so, uh, we'll send you over map starter. We'll send I have it already. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I bought it. I had to use it. I used it about two years ago after I had a surgery. Loved it. It was a great program. Okay. So, oh, then, you so okay. You, okay, good. That, then that helps us then. It, so what do you, do you see your husband? Will he follow something like that? Would he be okay doing that? Is it, do you, I mean, yeah, okay. yeah, he would okay. definitely. Um, and the thing is like, we're not working. I want us to work out like to accomplish a program together, but we're not working out at the same time of day because our schedules would conflict uh, okay. and I don't, I don't want to be the coach. <laughs> yeah. no, that's very, so that's just that's very wise better for yes. the marriage yes <laughs> so here's I, I agree with that 100 percent too so here's another thing that yeah, we'll yeah. do for him so I, if he'll do this yeah. um we yeah. will give him access for free to our private forum so this will okay. allow this will allow him to let us be the coaches right so he can go in there he has cool. questions about the program he's got any sort of aches and pains going on or something doesn't feel right, right. or he has questions about nutrition that community is yeah. perfect for that. He can go in there any time of the awesome. day, leave a question, tag sure. one, tag one of us. We can help him out. Okay. So we'll send it. We'll, so you already got starter, so you're good there. I'd start with that. Yeah, thank you. And then you guys could probably progress to anabolic relatively mm-hmm. yeah. quick after Do you that. have access to MAPS yeah. anabolic too, Whitney? I don't, no. And I wanted, I have been listening to you guys for ages now. Um, and I've been curious. I got starter because I needed it. I also got your suspension one. Love that. And then maps anywhere. Fantastic. But I've never, because I've come from the CrossFit Olympic and powerlifting background, I've always just focused on performance. So you you guys have piqued my interest on sculpting your body, okay. essentially. Perfect. So that's something I've been curious and in, in trying because I've, I've never done that. I just always focused on how much weight I, weight I could lift. Okay. Well, here's another thing. Look, earlier, the audience doesn't know this, but we tried to get on with you and we had lots of technical difficulties. So yeah. be, be, and you had to wait. <laughs> it was you a had, rat's nest. You've had to wait for over an hour to get on. So I'm going to give you MAPS that's Anabolic. So We're going to throw in MAPS Anabolic for free as well. So oh, you that'll, guys are too sweet. Thank that'll you. Be, that'll be the program that you do after MAPS Starter. So after your husband completes okay. MAPS Starter, have him start right. in MAPS anabolic pre-phase, do pre-phase for about three or four okay. weeks, then he can move into phase one, and then he's going to have a blast doing that. And since yeah. you're going, awesome. you're, you, we've piqued your interest in kind of training this way, I, for you, yeah. I would run anabolic followed by aesthetic. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. When you, so, after you're done with MAPS anabolic, go so MAPS run, run anabolic, follow it to a T, trust the process, okay. uh, and knowing that, and here I have to warn you, okay, with your competitive background mm-hmm. and, and your crossfitting, yeah. the hardest thing will be the psychological thing and trusting, trusting in us. That I promise you're gonna, it'll serve you well to do drop down to a three day a week full body type of routine. Make sure you rest between yeah. sets, follow it to a T, and then from there, okay. go to, then from there, go to aesthetic, and you're gonna love what you see. Okay, cool. I love that. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Whitney. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, that's great. Um, I like to hear that, you know. And and here's the thing. Like, here's the thing that I always consider the most whenever I hear this from a couple is I consider she's probably tried to talk him into working out of course, of course. for a long time. So the number one thing that I think about is let's not let's not. I don't want to create any potential roadblocks, which could be oh my hip hurts, my knee hurts. Oh, I can't do that lift because my mobility. So I always tend to err on the side of let's yeah. go easier. And let him build that momentum and that consistency so that he ends up being consistent long term. Well, it's with her. great that he can follow it on his own time and they're not like yeah. there to. I mean, because that is kind of a, a big discrepancy between the two. And, and oh, yeah. You know, and so it's like, you know, it could be a little bit demoralizing where, where your body currently stands. And so to, to be able to like ha- take your time, you know, ramp your, your body back up and get the strength back, I think that's going to be great for him. Yeah. Don't don't coach your spouse. No, no that's, no. A, that's a mistake. Big advice. Uh, right uh, especially, in, I mean, she's like a certified badass so this right. is i mean that's not no husband's gonna want to get his ass clean you know inside the gym but, you know <laughs> lifting with his wife you know, i don't care who yeah. you are i don't care how the, the ego kicks in he'll yeah. do something stupid i don't care who you yeah. are you know what i'm saying like that, that, that doesn't feel good takes for, weight off the bar yeah yeah it doesn't feel good <laughs> for any man so yeah him and i agree with you so i think that uh you know my my concern was him being as athletic as he is seeing a program that is you know stability ball and dumbbells and stuff that he needs to do you know if he was my client i'm with you I would make him, you know what I'm saying? I would force him if I saw him and say, hey, we need to do this stuff. But I think he can go from starter to into anabolic and be just fine, especially if he addresses mobility. So. Totally. Look, check this out. If you like Mind Pump, go check out mindpumpfree.com. we got a lot of free guides there that you can learn from, tons of them. 
and they're all free. You can also find all of us on social media, Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I do want the pizza. You know, I do. I say I can't because I can't because I'm following a diet, and I'd be lying to myself if I said I don't want it. And that's why this takes a little bit more practice. And how do you get from I don't want it instead of saying I can't have it? You have to start to learn to connect how your body feels 